How does a servo woofer work? And what is a servo woofer? This question comes to us from Joe in Dallas, Texas. And he writes, I've always been intrigued by the woofer servo correction mechanisms on your beta and IRS reference speaker systems. Can you explain a bit about how this feature works, how it came about? And there are some very expensive high-end speakers made today that don't have this feature. In fact, most speakers don't. Does this mean they could be better with woofer servo correction? Well, that's a great question and one that we will talk about more and more as time goes on because as many of my viewers uh, to this channel know, PS Audio is going to start building loudspeakers that are based on the, the life and work of Arnie Nudell, the founder of Infinity, and his first speaker system he and John Ulrich came out with in the late 60s was called the Servo Static One, and that was a electrostatic loudspeaker on the top end and a servo-controlled woofer on the bottom end. And that's why they called it the Servo Static. Clever, those boys. <laughs> well, Ulrich was an engineer and Arnold a physicist, so, but it, it, you know what? It was, it was pretty cool. They, they, uh, uh, they also named a speaker the POS, which stood for piece of shit, but I think they had an official name for it that, that, uh, and denied that to, to, you know, to the end. What else did they have one? Um, oh, the SM series. That was a good naming one. That, Arnie hated that. The SM series was the Studio Monitor Series. And they sold bazillions of them to uh, service guys overseas. This was back during the Vietnam War. And, and they just sold uh, bazillions of them. Arnold hated it. It, it was just a big, boomy, loud loudspeaker, and he called it the sadomasochist speaker for only, you know, for people that wanted to hear jet airplanes traveling overhead and loud rock bands, which, which, which the Arnold detested. But anyway, the marketing department said, whatever, let's just call it studio monitors. So anyway, so much for naming. <laughs> and the electrostatic servo woofer system uh, with the electrostats on top and the servo woofer on the bottom was how they started. And when we did Genesis together and during almost all of the infinity years, we put in servo controlled woofers. Much of that work was done by Bascom King, who now makes our line of BHK electronics. And Bascom is, is, a, uh, is an absolute expert at, at servo control and he's taught me basically everything I know. Now I've designed a lot of the servo systems that have since come, come in, but it's all based on what I've learned from, from Bascom. And so let me briefly explain what a servo controlled woofer is, but I'll start by trying to tell you what the problem with woofers are. And uh, we've talked about this before, but it's, it's worth going over again. Woofers have mass. So the bigger the woofer, the greater the mass. And that mass is a combination of the cone, which can be metal or paper, and sometimes they're very big, maybe 10, 12, 18 inches. Walt, Walter Liederman has, I think it's a 24 inch woofer. I mean, that bad boy is big and heavy with a lot of mass. And to make the mass problem worse, you've got a big coil of copper uh, wire on the back called the voice coil that's attached to the cone. And so as the magnetic field tries to push the woofer forward and pull it back in order to pressurize the air back and forth and we hear sound, that mass is tough to get it going. Imagine, you know, if you're trying to push your car, it takes a lot of energy to get that sucker moving. And once you get it moving, it, it keeps going, right? Imagine, you know, inertia, just keep, you hit the brakes and you keep flying. Hopefully you have your seatbelt on. So with all that mass, unlike a tweeter, which has very low mass, woofers have this movement problem. It's hard to get them going. And once they get going, it's hard to stop them from going. And when we are moving this woofer back and forth, a hundred times a second or 20 times a second or whatever the frequency happens to be, you get distortion and overhang and 
uh, and that's because of the mass of the woofer can't follow the instructions of the amplifier perfectly. So what do we do? Well, what we need is a motional feedback system. And an emotional feedback system is a way of measuring on a real-time basis what the cone is doing and comparing that to what the amplifier is telling it to do. And then you make a correction signal. So that's what a servo woofer is. Now, how, do, how does it actually work? Well, there are a number of ways to do it, but the way that we do it is, I believe, the best, and it uses an accelerometer. Now, an accelerometer is a device that, that if you have a, a, a phone, as you, as you pick your phone or any number of things have accelerometers today, it measures the acceleration and can tell when I move it, like if I move something up and down, uh, it'll tell the direction I'm moving and it will tell you how much I'm moving something. And oh, airplanes use them, they're, they're, they're everywhere. And, they're, and today they're cheap. Now when Arnie and John Ulrich started Infinity, they bought surplus uh, uh, accelerometers from the aerospace industry, they paid like $350, $400 for the, the elements that made it. And those are rejects. Yeah, I mean, they didn't meet military standards. So they bought the rejects for $350 bucks and put these on it. And I still have the one on the Infinity IRS-5 that I have in Music Room 1. <clears throat> that, that one is one of those $350 surplus you know, not surplus, but uh, obsolete. Didn't measure properly. <laughs> I'll get it. Over the years, accelerometer, I mean, you can't have a $350 accelerometer in a $99 phone. So over the years, accelerometers have become very, very low cost. They're, they're, they're built in on chips. There's, uh, oh, a dime a dozen, right? So we use something that is a little different, and this is something that Bascom came up with in the first place, which is a piezoelectric element. So a piezoelectric element is a piece of barium titanate um, that, uh, well, it, barium titanate is like a, a coating, a, a, a type of material that is placed over on a brass uh, quarter. And just, just picture a very thin sheet of round brass with two layers of barium titanate on each side and a wire attached to it. And th the, the piezo action of this is as you flex uh, a piezo crystal or any kind of piezo element, it creates a voltage that is proportional to the amount of movement. Now imagine that this round quarter is attached to the voice coil and very simply, as the woofer moves back and forth, it flexes the piezoelectric element. And I think this piezo element <coughs> that we use is like $2, $1.50. It's pretty cheap. Then we take that and we hook it up to a, a complex set of electronics. But it's, they're easy to understand what they do. Basically, uh, it goes into what we call a difference amplifier. So I take the output of the piezo uh, device I have to, uh, and, and at this point I believe it's uh, velocity, and now I have to, to convert it to acceleration, I have to integrate it, do some fancy stuff to it, now I have an acceleration, and I can measure exactly what the cone is doing. I compare that to what the input signal is, and I send a correction signal out. The net result of all of this, about 10 times lower distortion than a woofer without an accelerometer. Ten times a magnitude, very big. Step response, where a normal woofer, if I put a square wave into it, it's going to go whoop, whoop. I'm exaggerating here. Put an accelerometer into it, boom, boom, boom. So the step response is like bang, 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 just like it should be, almost instantaneous. In fact, at low frequencies, we're able to reproduce square waves in our woofers, and I'll try that on a, a woofer without an accelerometer, doesn't happen. Accelerometers also equalize for the box. So regardless of what size box I put in, uh, if I put a woofer in a small box and then run a frequency response, even though I put a flat signal into that woofer, the output of the woofer is not flat because as it goes down in frequency, the box 
constrains the woofer and, and, and tells it, well, you know, you need more power in order to battle the internal pressure here. But the woofer doesn't know that. So now you have to EQ it in a whole different way. Put a servo onto it, flat as a board. Auto EQ, it's not really equalizing. But, so you have to think about how it's working because it senses, oh, I'm not doing what I'm told, so I keep doing more, right? So we get perfectly flat response. We get step response that's extremely quick, and we get low distortion. So what's not to love about a, 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 a servo-controlled woofer? And why don't other people have it? I think most people out there either don't know about them or they don't know how to design them. And I had to design one for Martin Logan years ago because they didn't know how to do it. So I think it's a matter of ignorance. I just think people just don't know how to do it. But we will, so the new PS Audio uh, Arnie Nudell series of speakers will be completely servo controlled on the woofers, and you'll see. All right, thanks.